Hey everyone! I am just going to share this into a couple things and we are going to do a fun demo today and Dave's going to help me. He's super excited about it. <laughs> you, you guys are missing all of his enthusiasm right now. So let me get this shared and we will rock and roll. You know that it's not their dog toy. This is it. It's Isaac's toy. <laughs> the dog's key. They were playing with it in the pool earlier. I know. Oh, geez, that's awesome. He just gave him a toy that Isaac has been trying to keep away from the dogs, but they somehow keep getting it. Now Zeke's going to bother me the whole time I'm live. All right. All right. So, what is everyone having for their Sunday dinner? I, we are going to have some ribs. They're actually in my oven right now. And um, let's try this again. There we go. Oh. If I would have done this right okay hmm. all right now let me do one more and we are good all right so let's rock and roll Dave's super excited All right, shut this. Everybody, tell Dave hello. Hi. You gotta turn the camera. <laughs> well, why didn't you turn the camera? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was gonna be more fun. I did totally. I forgot to put my apron on. And I really need to remember to buy those hooks to put up in there. Cause you know that'll only take me a couple of weeks to do. It's already been over a month. I know. I keep forgetting to get them at the store. All right. So, you guys know I love the pineapple wedge Um, I'm not doing ribs in the quick cooker this time. When I do a whole rack of ribs, I usually prefer to do it in my oven just because I have a tried and true method that I really love. Now, when I do country style ribs, I do use my quick cooker because they come out beautifully every single time. All right. So... Let me show you my fun little trick here, beside being able to do this. All right. And I should have gotten a trick. All right. So, I, what I do is at 350 for about an hour, I cook these covered in my um, 9 by 13 baker. And I just cut it in half just because then it's easier. And sorry, I'm looking for barbecue sauce. I think I have some. If not, I'm going to make some. So. And I forgot to make, I forgot to buy some at the store. My grocery list has not been on par lately. All right, a dog. Pardon Zeke. All right. Dave's very ashamed of me right this minute. So, barbecue sauce. Ketchup, Worcestershire sauce. Oh, I'm gonna get a lot of <laughs> um, Stop your life. Me. Okay, I actually want a prep bowl. Sorry, I'm gonna move behind you. Woo! Told you. All right. So, and then my little couple little tools. So I'm going to move this. Squirt ketchup in. This is the quickest and easiest way. I know I'm going to do a little extra because I know I'm going to need it. And you can add a little bit of, um, sometimes I'll do a little bit of white vinegar or apple cider vinegar to it too, just to get a little, the extra tanginess. So, so, but this will get a nice smoky flavor and I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. And I'll do a little bit of our rub. Um, our smoky barbecue rub just to make sure the flavors match. Okay. Mm. 
You have is it DJ Chris is watching. Oh, good. We miss Hi, having good. Charles on our basketball teams. That is true. All right, some pepper. Yeah, I'm just gonna put some pepper in Their prices are kind of inflated when they do that. Yeah, well. Compared to like the commissary. Sometimes. I usually really do like their ribs. So. All right. So I'm just going to put it on this, this side to get them nicely finished. That way they'll finish tenderizing. And then this is going to go in for probably about another 45 minutes generally. I usually do anywhere between an hour and 45 and two hours depending on the size of the ribs and um, but I do an hour pull it out and do another 45 minutes to an hour oh my god, oh my god. I would have been heartbroken had I broken my bar pan I had that thing for a while okay so later we're gonna do doing fancy mashed potatoes and the potato plates California blend veggies and um, we're gonna have pineapple with this and some of our yummy cucumber, tomato, uh, and feta cheese salad. I don't know what the heck's going on there. All right. I need to get my ice cream thing. Oh, okay. We'll just show the island with the pineapples for now then. Today, I need to be like Wendy and I need to get a second base so I can make two flavors back to back if I want. Alright, clear base, pop some in here, snaps in. The snaps on. Plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Okay. Um, and let me get it in right. There we go. Alright, so I did a coconut flavor this time. So I used a little bit of coconut extract, some coconut flakes, and I'm gonna mix in some mini chocolate chips. So as always, the base is, you can either do one or two cups of heavy whipping cream, and then one or two cups of whatever type of milk you wanna use. Um, you just need three cups of liquid total, a half a cup of sugar. I did like a half a cup of the coconut flakes because I want it, and then about a teaspoon of extract. And that'll get you good. So what I always do is I always mix up my stainless bowl because they get colder faster. And then I pop it in the freezer for like 20 minutes. That way they have a chance to get really cold because you want to be working with really cold ingredients, okay? So, and about halfway through is when I'm going to mix in those chocolate chips. All right, so. And the sugar in the ice cream helps to keep it softer. Um, the fat will help it keep it creamier and that's what changes the texture. So you don't have to use real sugar or even real milk, but it will change the texture. So you have to play around with the recipes. And there are lots of recipes floating around and I have a handful to help make them really good texture. So we're gonna leave that go. I set it for 25 minutes. All you have to do is press power and then timer, and it goes up in five minute increments. Pineapple. We need to hurry up and get these cut. My dogs are going to be under my feet. Because we all love pineapple, but hate cooking, um, cooking it. Well, you have me do that too. Um, cutting it because it's a pain. It's real porous. You know, it's kind of pokey um, and can be difficult to do. And I just poked myself just now. So. Oh, did I not even grab out my pineapple wedger? I did not. And I'm going to put a little extra off of here. No, I'm good. All right, so set this one off. I like using my big cutting board. It's a little higher, and I'm not even using the right drawer here. Um, all right, so all of our cutting stuff comes with a protective lid. 
which will also come in handy at the end. So we're going to center this so that way you get that core that's kind of hard out. And there we go. And it's just a rocking motion at first to get it rolling and then it just kind of slides down. And then you finish it on here. So then you have a beautiful pineapple. Pull the pieces out. And then do it again. So you normally, I mean, if you're lucky and oh, darn it. Sorry, got it on the edge of the thing. I'm going to switch it over where it's wider. Okay, so if you, um, come on, if you get this, the skin side and you don't give it enough buffer, it won't go down. So, there we go. I probably could have cut this one in half and been good to go. Oops, already lost the piece. There we go. I may have to trim this one a little bit, I think. All right. Okay, so it is dishwasher safe. I usually just have dishwater running like that and throw it in when you dry off my hands. And yes, I sure do need to trim this. Alright. So every once in a while when the pineapple's not wide enough, you'll just need to trim it. But you normally pay, I mean for one of those containers just of one pineapple all cut up, I mean that's anywhere between five and eight dollars depending on which grocery store you're getting at. So you can pay, depending on where you get it and, you know, what season it is, you can pay anywhere between, like, dollar to four dollars, you know, for the pineapple. And, of course, the price of it already cut will fluctuate based on that. But you're going to save so much money and only have to do a few minutes worth of work. I mean, I'm talking and cutting, and it's done pretty quick and easy. Poor Isaac, when he cut this, he made huge chunks because that's what he wanted to do. It was hilarious. All right, so let me pop these in the bowl so I have a little added space. So it's nice and fresh and quick and easy. And I can actually, the juice can go into the wells so it gets out of the way and doesn't spill all over my counter. And I can actually just pour it right in the bowl. All right, so. Was it still is? Well, I know, but it's not like it was. All right. I'm very excited for this ice cream today. All right. Ooh, these pine this pineapple is super ripe. I'm so glad I got these. So, remember, when we're picking a pineapple, you pull off the middle leaf, and if it's too easy to pull out, then it's probably overripe, and if it's too hard to pull out, it's probably not ripe enough. So. You want to go with one that's just right, just like Goldilocks does, okay? Both my hands. Yeah, it's definitely still raining. All right, so we'll set this aside. We'll set this aside, and we will have everything ready. There's a dog there. And I just stepped on our tail. And since the dishwasher run is running, I'm just going to throw all of this over here just to hand wash when I'm done. So I'm going to use the leak proof container. I know we have the new um, freezer containers, but because I made this a little bit extra with mix-ins, I didn't want to have to do two containers and I'm going to do this. And I'll get a chance to actually use my ice cream spade as well. So we haven't gotten to use that yet. So mm, ice cream smells good. All right. So does anybody have any questions? I bet not. All right. We will see you later, guys. Have a great one.